When mounting a cylinder head, always use a new steel gas sealing ring. The gas sealing faces of both the cylinder liner and the cylinder head must be in good condition. Otherwise, lap them slightly with a lapping ring. Clean the push rod sealing rings thoroughly and grease them with the required silicone grease, which keeps the rubber in good condition. Subsequently, place the push rod protecting pipes. Check the push rods for damage and mount them with the venting hole pointing upwards. Fit a new rubber sealing ring on the flange of the inlet air bend and grease it with the prescribed lubricant. Also on the connection pipe for the starting air, a new sealing ring is fitted and greased with a prescribed lubricant. Now the new cooling water sealing ring around the cylinder head is fitted and greased. Finally, both the rubber sealing rings of the push rods in the cylinder head are being renewed and greased. Turn the cylinder in combustion top position so that the inlet and the exhaust push rods are placed on the base circles of the cams. Now cautiously lower down the cylinder head over the cylinder head stud bolts and guide both push rods down through the passages in the cylinder head. The push rod protecting pipes need to be guided as well until they fit properly in the cylinder head. Make sure that the cylinder head will also slide easily over the starting air connection pipe. By the oblique position of the inlet and exhaust flanges, the cylinder head automatically takes its position. Make sure that the exhaust flange on the cylinder head fits in the lower clamping piece. Clean the surface of the cylinder head and the nuts thoroughly and check for damage before the nuts are being applied. Fit the hydraulic stretching tools again. Then, tighten the jacks completely and connect the hoses. The return valve on the pump should be opened. After that, it is necessary to check if the jacks can be turned any further. This is to be absolutely sure that the jacks are in bottom position and that there is a maximum stroke available. Bring simultaneously the jacks under pressure as prescribed in the engine instruction manual. Tighten the nuts completely and check the nut displacement by counting the number of holes that should be the same for every nut. Fully release the pressure and turn down the jacks as far as possible. After that, bring the jacks for the second time under full pressure. Try to turn the nut farther. Repeat this procedure as a checkup. Make sure the nuts do not turn any farther. After that, remove the stretching tools. You can start, for example, with mounting at the exhaust side. For this purpose, grease first the inside of the upper exhaust clamping ring with a heat-resistant lubricant. Subsequently, place the clamping ring over the exhaust flange and mount it with the four socket head screws. Treat the screw thread of these bolts also with a heat-resistant lubricant as specified in the instruction manual. Then, these socket head screws are tightened to a specific torque. This torque wrench is a standard delivered tool with the engine.
Use a new gasket when the cooling water discharge pipe is mounted. The bolts of the rubber clamping piece are also tightened to a specific torque. Successively, the pilot starting air pipe, lubrication oil supply pipe and the central drain pipe can be mounted at operating side. Remove the protecting cap of the fuel pressure insert in order to mount the high pressure fuel line. First, tighten the union nut of the high pressure fuel line in the connection to the fuel pump and after that, the union nut on the insert. Both union nuts of the high pressure fuel line are tightened to a specific torque. First, tighten the union nut on the fuel pump. After that, the union nut of the insert from the cylinder head. Subsequently, the fuel drain pipe is connected. Finally, the sealing flange on the cylinder head is tightened. Check if, at operating side of the cylinder head, no parts or tools are left behind. After that, the panels of the hotbox can be mounted. Subsequently, the valve clearance has to be adjusted. However, for this purpose, the yoke has to be adjusted first in such a way that the clearance at both valves are equal. Consult the instruction manual for the correct procedure. Equal adjustment of the yoke can be achieved with the adjusting bolt of the yoke. After adjustment, the locking nut of the adjusting bolt is tightened to a specific torque. During tightening, the adjusting bolts as well as the yoke need to be held tight. Otherwise, there is a chance that the bolt will break from the guide block. The valve clearance is adjusted with the adjusting bolt in the rocker arm. A feeler gauge of the correct size is placed between the yoke and the pivot. Hereafter, the adjusting bolt is tightened until the pushrod jams. This can be checked by turning the pushrod by hand. Tighten the locking nut to the correct torque. Take care that during tightening of the locking nut, the adjusting bolt does not turn any further by holding it tight with a spanner. Finally, the clearance between the yoke and the guide block have to be checked with a feeler gauge. Now mount the thermocouple for the temperature of the exhaust gases and connect the plug of the exhaust valve temperature monitoring system. Finally, place the cylinder head cover. Before closing, it is wise to make a final check of the lubrication points and cooling water in and around the cylinder head. <laughs>